Shane here with Dark Rangers Inc. And today we're gonna go over a highly requested topic, how to get an SHO color palette look with a one-shot color camera and a set of dual narrowband filters. Now, since these products are relatively new, there isn't a playbook out really for them yet. And so I went about it a little bit differently. For this one, I had the end goal of the North American Nebula that I created with my actual monochrome camera and a set of SHO filters. And Caden, a subscriber of the channel, shout out to him, was nice enough to give me some data that he took with a set of Ascar Color Magic filters using a D1, which is the HA03, and a D2, which is the S203 filter set and just try to go from the data that I got all the way to an image that looked very similar to an actual Hubble palette. So with that in mind, it was a fun challenge and I didn't even have to separate the channels in order to get there, which was really nice. And so with that, let's dive right into PixInsight and I'll show you guys how I went about it. All right, here we are in PixInsight. I have the S2 filter with the O3 on the left and the HA03 on the right. I kind of had to go about this from a standpoint of trying to problem solve. Again, we're trying to get to this, an actual SHO image. And so I thought to myself, you know, how can we get there? So the first thing I did is our normal kind of pre-processing stuff where I did a dynamic background extraction, blur exterminator, noise exterminator, and star exterminator. And and that got us to right here. I saved the HA stars. The S203 stars were a lot larger and more plentiful. I even tried to balance them with Blur Exterminator and it still didn't help by making it a smaller uh, sharpening factor. So for this one, because they are narrow band, they don't have the true RGB color anyway. I think I'm just gonna set these HA stars aside and uh, keep those for now. And as you can see, I did name it to simplify HA and O3, and that's because if you look at it, the S2 O3 filter really allows a lot more of that oxygen signal to come through, which is really nice. This is probably the biggest advantage of the filter set because with one shot color, as you guys know, it's typically the most difficult to really get that oxygen signal. And then with the HA03, we have the look that we're kind of used to. It looks very hydrogen alpha dominant. And so when I was thinking, how can we combine these in a way that uses the data from both, but retains a lot of this O3 signal, uh, I decided to name them HA and O3 for a reason because I just went into pixel math and I did a basic HA, O3, O3, or an HOO combination. Just wanted to pause for a quick PSA, not saying that this is the best way to do it, but remember our goal was simplicity and we had an end result in mind and I think you'll see that we were able to achieve it. So this is gonna be an ongoing discussion. This is just one way of many to combine these filters, but without the need to extract the different channels and do a bunch of different pixel math formulas, this was a nice simple way to combine the data and get the results we were looking for. All right, let's dive back in. And with that, I'm gonna do it with an unlinked stretch. I was able to get this. So um, retaining a lot of that nice rich oxygen as well as a lot of the details around the outside in S2 and HA. So let's go ahead and blow that up. The issue is, as with most one-shot color narrowband situations, where especially if we're trying to recreate the Hubble palette, we have kind of an imbalance in the channel. If I do a link stretch where everything gets stretched equally, you can see that. So it's very red dominant. I'll go ahead and undo that and go back to the link stretch. So we wanna to get to there. And let me show you if we were to go straight into GHS, it would obviously do a very similar thing because with GHS, we are gonna be doing just an RGB stretch. So it's gonna be pulling all three channels across at the same time. And so we'd get something that looks, you know, like that with the HA kind of on its own island or excuse me, the red signal, which I automatically associate with HA. But what we could do is we could normalize this manually. We're not going to for the actual image, but I'll show you kind of how that would look. What I would do is I would go into the red channel and I'd give it a pretty big stretch because we're gonna need to move it a long way. And then I take that symmetry point and just kind of force it back. And we're, what we're really trying to do is just line up these channels now. So then I could go in the blue, probably without even using a symmetry point potentially, and just kind of start to work that forward. And then I could do the same thing with green, uh, probably not as much. And we might want to use a little bit of a symmetry point. 
But you get the idea. We, we could potentially create a similar look to non-link stretch looks. So this is kind of what I came up with. Again, we'd fine tune it quite a bit, but we could just do the unlink stretch very similar. And as we know, if we want to apply that permanently, we can just hit that nuke button to input it into the STF uh, function here, take this triangle, slide it over to the histogram. We'll go ahead and turn off the temporary STF and drag this triangle to apply it permanently. So now it's actually stretched. It's not just a screen transfer function. Um, we have to go through that process really quick. Maybe one day they'll have a button that allows you to just do that. Uh, that would be fantastic. Um, but if we want to take that a step further, we obviously have the narrow band normalization tool, which I have a whole video on if you want to check that out. And leaving it in its stock settings of HOO, which is usually what you want to do when you're working with one shot color data. We could uh, try the different lightness modes. I'm probably going to leave it off because we're going to take it in a GHS anyway. I just want to get the colors a little bit closer again to that final look that we're going for. So uh, as you can see, if we turn that off and on, we've accomplished that. I did bump the O3 just a little bit. Now we can go into GHS and we're gonna be much further along. So here we go. Let's go ahead and turn the preview on. I'm gonna leave it in RGB mode um, here for the first couple. So why don't we pick a spot for the symmetry point? You can see we have this big secondary hump here and I'm going to guess that if we pick that spot, it's gonna give us a really nice result as we smooth that out as you can see it really does it's doing everything we want it to giving us contrast before after that's beautiful and that's just always a good way to kind of pick your spots we could probably do maybe one more let's find a second area where it's still kind of got that little bit of that mound effect and you know what i'm actually going to take that symmetry point and slide it just a little to the left to brighten it up so before after and that might be a little more than I want. So I don't want to introduce that much contrast just yet before, after. I like to, these days when I stretch, I like to leave it a little bit flatter so I can kind of fine tune it in post production. But as you can see, we've got this blue channel that's still kind of lagging behind as it likes to do um, with one shot color data. So I'm just going to give it just a little nudge, no symmetry point, just a little nudge before, after. If it was getting into the background, what I do is I just take that symmetry point, you know, drag it this way and make sure that we got it out of the background. But let's go right around. Yeah, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. I like to go through each channel individually then. We do have a little bit of red maybe lingering in the background. So I'm going to give that a little bit of a bump. And then now I am going to use the symmetry point and drag it. And so what we're doing is we're wanting to get it out of the background and just keep it in the areas we want. So you can see that this area was enhanced, but without adding it into the background. If we go to the left, it will enhance it in the areas we want, but then also in the areas we don't. So you're just going to use the symmetry point to fine tune that. I'll go ahead and apply that. And then let's check the green channel as well. We'll start from scratch. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of a bump and then slide that symmetry point over until I get the look I want bef before, after. You can see it was getting a little bit of purple and magenta look because of stretching the red and the blue without balancing out with some of the green. So the green brings back some of that yellow. So that's where we're at. And as you can see, uh, you know, realistically, uh, I would probably just take this into Photoshop for the final result. But for some of you guys that maybe aren't using that yet, let's um, doll it up a little bit more here in PixInsight. If I wanted to add a little punch, like I did in a couple videos ago, we will do local histogram equalization. I have the settings that I kind of found, again, usually between 50 and 200. I want to really accentuate the smaller details and some of this dark structure. So I kind of want to be on the smaller end of that 50 to 200. If I go to the 200, it does enhance it, but it doesn't kind of target the areas I want. So um, at 2.0 contrast and 0.2 on the amount before, after, you can see it does a nice job really defining these dark structures in here, and it gives us a little pop. So there's the before, there's the after. We'll go ahead and apply that. And then that's what it would look like if it applied it again. That's too dramatic for me. So we're going to turn that off. And then there we go. We've done a nice job giving it a little bit more oomph. Let's go into our curves transformation. Go ahead and reset that. Turn on the preview with this little 
circle down here. Let's just do a general saturation. I'm gonna just pull it right from the middle. We do have a little color kind of coming in on the dark area, so I'm gonna level that out a little bit and go ahead and apply that. So that's not gonna make a huge difference, and I don't really want to. Let's see where the blue is, is kind of right in the middle of the histogram as well. So I can kind of go in and pull that up and give it a little bit of contrast with the S curve. You can see there is some kind of red lingering there that we do want to get rid of. Um, so let's see, where is that showing up? Yeah, to the center, maybe a little bit to the right of center is where we want it. And then where we don't is right down here. So we'll pull that down. You can see before, after kind of got rid of it in the background. And then let's just make sure the green channel is really where we want it as well. So if anything, yeah, we don't need as much before. You can see there is a little bit of a green haze. It might not show up for you guys, but there's the before, there's the after. It did just kind of sharpen it up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to maybe give it a little less so it's not so dramatic before, after. And then there we go. I think that's a really good spot to kind of go into Photoshop now. If you guys were keeping it in PixInsight, there's obviously a lot further that you could take this. But when we consider where we started from and um, what our goal is of getting to here, I think we did a nice job. This was my first draft of it. I didn't apply the saturation um, and some of the other techniques. So that's what I ended up with. But going back into PixInsight, all we have to do now is just add the stars back in. I did go ahead and just stretch them. And so we'd go into Utilities and Screen Stars. And we'll go ahead and choose the SHO and then the HA Stars. And we can call it uh, NA Pre Photoshop and go ahead and create that. And now we have a star filled version um, ready to go in. Um, so this is what I brought in and then this was the final image. So if we look at, you know, what I was able to get with the monochrome, I do think the data is probably a little bit cleaner if we look at some of the finer details. Um, but this is more, I, I also have more hours of integration um, than the data we had from Caden. So you can see kind of the, the dark structure and just the smoothness overall is, is really nice. Um, if we go over here, the look is pretty similar. And I think that's the main thing people are going for. They really want the look. They know that obviously with monochrome, you know, the data is a little bit more rich, a little bit more dense because we're not throwing away part of each pixel. But I think undeniably the overall appearance is going to be very similar. I did edit this four or five months ago, so most of it is probably just stylistic in terms of the difference. But I will say that adding that second filter did a great job of really allowing you to bring out that O3 signal very easily, very naturally. As you can see, we just did an unlink stretch and the normalization tool and you know we were about 80% of the way to this image. And then, you know, just hitting it with some GHS, a little bit of curves. And um, you know, this is a pretty good result in and of itself. And I think um, when we look at the final, it's good. So I do have a video coming out soon for the quad band filter. It's on its way, should be here any day. And then also for that sky quality meter. So stay tuned for that, guys. We have some good content coming up. Um, thank you guys for staying through this long. And I would definitely recommend uh, if you're sticking with one shot color for a while and you're not gonna upgrade to monochrome, definitely take a look at one of these filter sets. I personally tend to really like Antlia filters, but these Ascar uh, filters for a pretty reasonable price are giving you a good result. And if you do have an existing dual narrow band, that's HA03, I wouldn't necessarily worry about getting the set right away. Maybe just get that second filter and see how it goes. They don't necessarily, I don't think, need to match. Um, but if you already have what would be the D1, which is, you know, again, HA03, then just go out and find one that has the S203 to go along with it. Guys, hopefully that was helpful in terms of whether or not to go forward with these filters. And then once you get them, how to actually use it. So guys, please subscribe. Um, you know, we actually uh, flattened out a little bit in September here, or excuse me, October. And I'd like to keep moving upwards so we can keep attracting partners to the channel. 
and have more gear and things for you guys to use. If you're going to upgrade or purchase anything, please take advantage of the links in the description. Some of them do have a discount. And as always, guys, clear skies. Uh -huh.